When you walk into a cheese shop in France, it's really overwhelming. But all I want is a yummy cheese to go with a glass of wine. So in this video, we'll take you to a typical French cheese shop. We'll ask some questions and try some cheese, and then we'll get some bread to go with it. And we'll meet with Vincent, our favorite food snob, to try them all together. Allez, on y va. And our first stop is the fromagerie. Frangine, which is a French slang that means brother. Come on. Bonjour. Bonjour. Vous êtes Victor? Exactement. Bonjour, Bonjour. Victor. Bonjour. So the first thing I notice when I'm coming in here is there's a lot of raclette cheese, which is a winter cheese. So exactly. I can see already this is going to be a seasonal conversation. Mm -hmm. So help me pick maybe six cheeses that are great if I want to put together a plate to go like on a picnic or take back to my hotel or just to enjoy that with some wine and bread. Okay, let's go. What do go. you suggest? Me, I will go to the Beaufort. Okay. from same family, a little bit more melty, fruity, okay. tasty. After, if you want like a summy hard, I really like one because I come from this place. Okay. It's Saint Nectar. Saint Nectar is like amazing. You can eat everything. The rind is really important in this cheese. Okay. And you have a little bit the taste of, you can see, it's still like hard, but okay. you see, a little bit more creamy. Got it. Onctuous, and you taste the mushrooms. Uh, the, the cream, the, the milk. Awesome. After, uh, we can go on the blue cheese. Blue cheese is really important in France. If you want like the most famous cheese in France, in blue, uh, you have the Roquefort. But me, I really like uh, the Roquefort cow because it's a little bit more intense, salty, a little bit creamy, really nice. I'm gonna take some Auvergne because mm -hmm. I, I want something lighter. Yeah, after, we can go on the sheep milk. For me, definitely, for the sheep, you have to take an Astoria. Yeah. Because it's a really classic one with a cherry jam or the Queen's Paste. And Queen's Space can go with the blue and the osoyot. What is the queen? The queen's paste. Queen's paste. It's a fruit paste. It's a fruit between pear and apple. So. But it's like a, a paste gem. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we have four. Mm -hmm. I need two more. We can go on a goat cheese, and for me, you have to take definitely a creamy goat cheese. Okay, let's go we have creamy. A, like a nice uh, specialty here. We made the goat cheese from south of France. You're gonna see. Man, that's only a... cream okay. and we have a little bit of olive oil and herbs on the top i think that a brie with truffle is the way to go that would exactly. wrap this up now let's go get some bread to go with the cheese now we've got some cheese and some bread Let's go get some wine with Vincent and eat this stuff. Bonjour, mon frère. Hello. Comment ça va? Salut, Antoine, ça va? Ça va. Bon. Oh là là. So Vincent, yeah. I got six different cheeses. I got a Saint Nectaire. I got a, some kind of a soft goat cheese. Yeah, sounds good. I got a brie with truffle. Wow. I got a, a blue cheese from Auvergne. I got a Beaufort. It should be delicious. Uh -huh. so Did I choose good cheese to go with champagne? Oh, yes, yes. Everything goes with champagne. Yes, she is absolutely right. That's going to be just perfect. This is a Brit Nature Pinot Noir. Uh, I think we're going to choice uh, Chablis. Chablis, this is uh, iconic. This is very, very, very good with the cheese. Maybe I'm going to choice something a little bit older of one year. It's 2019. Okay. okay. So this wine is already four years old. I'm happy to try something new. I'm oh, going to learn yes. something uh, else. The, I think Antoine will love it. And because we have a relationship with Vino Sapiens, we got our wine here and Vincent does his wine tasting next door. So we're going to go over here and have this stuff. Come on. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So we got six different cheeses and three types of bread. And let me show you what we got. This one here is a goat cheese with olive oil and herb. This one is a Beaufort, which is kind of like a Comté. It's a hard pressed cooked cheese. This one is a truffle brie. Oh my God, that looks so yummy. And you can see the truffles on top. That yeah. just looks fabulous. Yeah. This one is Oso Irati. We have a blue cheese from Auvergne. Yes. This one is a Saint Nectaire. And then we got this, a paste from a fruit that's somewhere between an apple 
and a pear. Yeah. And then we got a couple of different breads. Um, this is a traditional baguette with uh, grains, multi-grain mm -hmm. baguette, which is the one Antoine and I eat at home all the time. Mm -hmm. This one is a, a, a kind of a cereal bread with some nuts and different kind of a flour in there. And this one is a country bread that's made with granolas. So there's some raisins and nuts and all kinds of things. And I think that's probably going to go good with some of the cheeses. Oh, yeah. Look, uh, my mouth is watering as you say that. Can we eat some cheese now? <laughs> no, you film, we eat. It works like yeah. that. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not how this works. Cheers. 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 Wine Cheers. tasting. Oh yeah, this is good. I'm gonna like that. Try, we're starting with the Beaufort, which actually, this is a great cheese for a picnic. So this is a Beaufort cheese, which is a cooked, pressed cow's milk oh, yeah. cheese. And this is similar to the Comté, but I know the Comté and I wanted to try a new one. It should be, you know, a little bit light and a little bit mild flavor because it's the summer cheese. So let's mm -hmm. try a bite. And, and just smell it first. Do this. Close oh, yeah. your eyes. Oh wow, I'm, ch I'm checking out the cheese like wine. You know, and then you feel, you feel, you are in the middle of the mountain. It does, it feels a little bit flowery and buttery, so. Hmm. And of course. What's interesting <laughs> is this one, sometimes when you get an older cheese, like the older cooked pressed cheese, mm -hmm. it gets a little bit grainy. This one is not, just really a smooth, buttery, nice cheese. Well, mm. I know a lot of people, especially a lot of American people who are concern that the taste of the cheese will be overpowering. This is not an overpowering cheese at all. You know, it's a, it's, it's easy, it's, it has personality, it has flavor, but it's a, a mild flavor. It's, um, you know, it, it tastes floral, buttery. It's a little bit salty, a little bit sweet. It's an easy cheese to eat. I think it's good for anybody. Yeah. It's not a cheese you need to be worried about. It's very smooth. It's very buttery. Yeah, so this combination, this burgundy wine, this Beaufort and a baguette, I'm telling you that. So this is the Oso Irati, and we're staying with red wine. And we have a little bit of the commis paste, because we're going to take a little bit of cheese. This one has a very distinct flavor. There's a combination of the cheese and the fruit and the bread. It brings it a certain flavor, but I want to try just the cheese with a little bit of wine. It's saltier, it's sharper. This is the one in the store. He told us it's a little bit like Manchego, but it's not exactly like the Manchego. It's Manchego with a little bit of personality. Yeah. And it's, um, it's a very nice, a very distinct cheese. I wouldn't give that one to kids, maybe. It's a very nice, full-flavored yeah. piece of cheese. And I bet it goes great with the red. It's nice. Yeah. It's a lot more neutral in the taste. I would say the Beaufort is a little bit a step above in terms of taste. Uh, it's a little bit more granular. It's not as smooth as the Beaufort. It's a very nice cheese. Uh, let me try it with, uh, with the paste. I think that maybe that's the, a perfect cheese with that little sweet taste here. And I think that the combination of that plus that and a little piece of bread will be in. amazing. Oh yeah, you're buying this one with that little fruit paste and it changes everything. Because the, the cheese by itself is okay. I mean, it's not bad. It's a, I mean, it's a very good cheese, but it just lacks personality. But then you put a little fruit taste and then you try a burgundy wine with that. And I'm sure it goes great together. This one is really good. I like it. I think today there's a lot of industrial kinds of truffles or they just add a little bit of oil and call it truffle. But the difference here is that this is actual truffle in the cheese. You can even see with the truffle on top, this should be the real deal. So I know in the boulangerie that I go to at home, they have a, a thick bread like this with some with figs and some with walnuts and different kinds Azimuth of things. Hazelnuts also. Yeah, and, uh, and I haven't had the granola one. It looks like that same kind of good hearty bread. Oh yeah. The fact is, this is the last piece of bread, mm -hmm. the traditional bread, you know, mm -hmm. like we had in the past from the medieval mm -hmm. age, this big, this high, and you can keep the fresh bread uh, for many days. Mm -hmm. With the baguette, the baguette is fresh today, tomorrow the baguette is dead. That's why the French go, every single day to buy the new baguette, okay? But th with this bread, you keep the fresh bread many, many days. And something that's funny with that is it's a huge <coughs> loaf of bread and you just tell them, I want this much, I want this much, I want yeah. this much, and they cut just the part of the loaf that you yeah. want. That's yeah. fun. Yeah. Oh. So let's try this one. Too soft just to pick it up and eat alone. Oh, 
I understand why that goes with champagne. It's like delicate and hearty at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, we, we had to switch to champagne to go with this. I don't wanna have a red wine overpower my brie with truffles. <laughs> I'm getting to be a snob. <laughs> Maybe. Like I am, yeah. <laughs> Tastes like it needs champagne. Hmm. La Contrancy. <laughs> so I'm not a huge brie fan. This is not a cheese that I go to. I am uh, much more into Comté and cooked cheese, but I can appreciate the uh, artisanal product uh, when I see one. Is that delicate? Oh. No, this is good. This is absolutely excellent. I've bought truffle brie in a grocery store before. I know it's yeah. criminal, but I've done it. Yeah. It doesn't taste anything like that. No. Nothing like this that. This is why when you're in France, you can buy cheese in a supermarket and it's going to look fancy and it's going to look great. But I'm telling you, you're much better off going to a small fromager like the one we went to and they're all over Paris. And the reason why is because these guys are buying cheese from small farms. Right, the, the supermarket is buying industrial cheese because they're making it for the masses. So they're different in taste but a, a brie with truffle from an artisan fromager that buys it from a local farm. It's just a world of difference. I mean, it's, it's not even comparable. Oh, this is good. I would definitely have that again. Definitely champagne and cheese is perfect together. It's easy to get tipsy when you drink and eat cheese. But now we're moving on to the Saint Nectaire. It's a pretty soft kind of a cheese. And we're gonna try it with this grain bread, pain de seigle. So I'm just gonna take a little bit. I tasted a lot of the nuts from the bread, so I wanna have some cheese alone. Oh yeah, that's really a mild buttery cheese. It's almost like a, it would be sacrilege to say it's like a cream cheese, but it has a kind of a, a flavor of a cream cheese with a texture that's more firm and, and pliable. But it's very mild, very easy to go with anything. Yeah. And now I'm gonna try it with the paste. Yeah, to give some power, some sweet, and you can be back with the red wine if you want to. You can continue with the champagne or red wine. So here I'm going to try it with a little bit of the fruit paste. It all complements each other. Yeah, exactly. Because I have all the red fruits in here and the other fruits in here with the cheese. I'm happy having a whole meal of cheese and bread and wine. I'm going to do something special. This is a wine of 2019, but I'm going to use this. This is the key of wine. This is something, some kind of secret, you know. If I put this in my wine, every one second, I win one year. So okay. if I do this. So if that's a 2019, one, it's 2018. Two, 17, three, 16, four. 15. I already win four years. Okay. So I know exactly what the taste of this wine will be in five years. It tastes It something. tastes different, it tastes more mild. Yeah. How come I don't have one of those? Well, <laughs> one, two, two, three, is this a four, joke? It tastes five. Different. This is not at all a joke. And the wine is getting better. It's a lot smoother. Yeah, it's fruity and peppery and it tastes a lot more mild. So I'm gonna try the wine without the magic stick. Okay, so I got that. Now I take this wine key here and I dip that in my wine. Okay. Let's do it for five. One, One two, two, three, three four, five. five. Okay, now I'm gonna now I'm gonna try the wine. Wow. What the f that's my question. <laughs> the the sharp edge of the wine is gone. What is this thing? What I could taste the difference between before and after was felt like the sharp edges of the wine was gone like the one was smoother. And did you taste the difference? I tasted a difference, definitely. Yeah, it was a lot smoother, like you said. Yeah, it's just, it's smoother. And we're gonna put a link in the description below, but my brother is a food and wine snob, uh, and I don't know him to be a guy that's going to be uh, tricked by gimmicks. And I have zero affiliation or attachment, or this is not sponsored by this stick. It's just Vincent pulled this out of his bag of tricks. That'd make a great gift. Yeah, it's a great gift for a wine connoisseur. Pretty remarkable. It's pretty remarkable, yeah. Thank you. So this one is the goat cheese with olive oil and herbs, and it's very messy. Maybe not the best choice for a picnic. The guy in the cheese store said that he gives a little knife, it comes in a little plastic uh, tub. I would get it if you're gonna eat it all, but check that out. 
Oh man, that looks yummy. Goat cheese is usually something that people are nervous about because it's very sharp and it has a different texture and stuff. This is creamy like a brie. It has just a, a different flavor, obviously. Yeah. It's very nice. You wanna have some something with that? Maybe. Let's just start with a little white wine, a little Chablis. Uh -huh. So you're having the Chablis now? I'm having a <laughs> Chablis. Because I have a drinking problem, apparently. <laughs> I go red, I go champagne, I go Chablis. I think I'm fine. It's only when I'm with Vincent that I drink too much. <laughs> yeah, there's a light fruity citrus thing with this. And I wanted fruit with that. And, and who needs grapes and apples and fruit if you can drink your grapes? <laughs> I'm not usually a white wine person, but that goes perfectly with this. And this last bite that I got, like the first bite was creamy and delicious and everything. The second bite that I took, I could taste the olive oil and the herbs. It's way better with the olive oil and the herbs, if you ask me. And to have that together with the Chablis, it was just extraordinary. Yeah. You're gonna like that. Look at this. Oh yeah. See this? This is what we say in France, uh, le petit Jésus en culotte de velours, which means a little Jesus and a velvet underwear. Don't ask me why. French people are weird. But when you say that, if you say it's, it's little Jesus and a velvet underwear, it's the sweetest thing you can have. Oh, this is so good. Oh, not bad, yeah. Oh yeah, the goat and this is perfect. Now we're gonna try a blue cheese, and this is a blue from Auvergne, towards the south central part of France, where they have all of the volcanoes, like 90 volcanoes, and that should be a delicious cheese. This blue cheese from Auvergne is a lot milder. There is different levels of sharpness and the, um, yeah. you know, and, a, and the, the powerful uh, flavor of the blue cheese. The Auvergne is a more mild one, more mild than the Roquefort. Yeah. Because I'm a colorful character, I like blue cheese with red wine. All right, so we have Thierry, the uh, the yes. owner of Vino Sapiens. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. No, we like the happy surprises. <laughs> I love this cheese. It's blue yeah. cheese. I like how we serve it with jam. A fig jelly. Fig. The Ch fig jelly goes with the blue cheese. Tu vas, incroyable. Normally, I have a fig jam with foie gras. I love that. Yeah. It's not too too sweet, huh? Okay. Voilà. It's like the blue cheese just woke up. Yeah. <laughs> This is, this is wonderful. Thank you for teaching me that. Yeah, a little bit of blue cheese on good crunchy bread. Oh, this is mild. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna try it with a fig jam, which I think will do it justice. Oh yeah. Did it wake it up? It's everything. This is how to eat this cheese. You have the rustic flavor of the blue cheese with the sweet of the fig jam. And I'm having this with burgundy wine. Wow, this is really good. This is how you have this cheese. Blue cheese, fig jam, burgundy red wine, you're in paradise. If you like this video, next I would watch this one about the five bakeries you need to try when you're in Paris.